If you're new to the channel, then you might not know that over the past seven or so years, I've actually featured close to 1,000 different applications on my channel. But if I'm being honest, most of them don't stay on my phone for very long. And so welcome to 20 Android apps that I cannot live without. I kid you not, anytime I start using a new phone, these are some of the very first apps that I download. The starting things off, we have Screen Dimmer. And if you, like me, are baffled that here in 2022, we're still having to deal with phone displays being far too bright at their minimum brightness settings, then this app thankfully saves the day. You just grant it accessibility access, place it into your quick settings menu, and there you go. After that is Backdrops. And whilst I don't use this app as often as I used to, mainly because I now primarily use my own wallpaper designs, if I'm ever in need of a quick visual overhaul of my home screen setup, or just a cool image to show on a phone whenever I'm filming, this is actually my go-to app. It is filled with an outrageous amount of abstract based backdrops, and it's really rare that I can't find one that looks incredible. The only issue is that there are so many amazing wallpapers within the app that sometimes it can be impossible to find the one you've actually set as your wallpaper, which can be an issue when you switch over to a new phone. And so the next app on the list that solves this issue is Get Current Wallpaper. Anytime I lose the original source of a wallpaper image I'm currently using, this is the app I use to retrieve it. It's super simple, but I genuinely find myself needing to use it more often than you'd expect. Now, from there, we have Icon Pack Studio. And if I'm ever using a phone with a launcher that allows for icon customization, such as the OnePlus launcher, then this app is a must have for me. The reason for this is that most of the icon packs I love using are always missing a few key application icons. And so using Icon Pack Studio, I can create custom icons that will fill in all of the blanks. And then to make the installation of these icons really seamless, I actually use an app called Icon Pack Mixer to combine all of the new icons I've made with the main icon pack I like using. I just navigate through the list and select all of the icons I wanna use for each individual app. And then the app will create an installable APK file that I can install just like I would any regular icon pack. This is then recognized as an icon pack by any phone launcher that supports icon theming, which means instead of customizing my icons one by one, I can do it all within a single click. But if I'm ever using a home screen launcher that does not allow for icon theming, AKA pretty much every stock launcher these days, then Shortcut Maker is the app I'll use instead. Using this app allows me to create app shortcuts using widgets, but the key is that I can customize the widgets to look however I want them to. The only downside is that you're still limited to the home screen grid layout that the phone system launcher allows for. And so if you want even more flexibility, then KWGT is my go-to solution. No joke, out of every customization app I use, this is the one I use the most often. Whether it's for my own home screen setup or for emulating setups for the customization videos on my channel, KWGT is such a powerful app and is one I'd truly struggle without. In fact, for the last year or so, this entire home screen setup that I've had installed on every phone I use has been made using just KWGT. And what's really cool is that if I tap on that weather widget, it will directly open the Google weather app. However, did you know that this isn't actually an app? For some odd reason, this really neat weather UI can actually only be found as a part of the Google app itself by tapping on this weather icon here, then scrolling down and tapping this button here. And so for as long as I can remember, I've actually used an app called Frog Weather Shortcut to act as a direct shortcut to this weather interface, which I can then set up as a tappable action within KWGT. For something so simple, I genuinely use its functionality nearly every day. All right, if you're a Reddit user, then you'll know that the stock Reddit app really ain't much to write home about. And so for me, for the longest time, I've instead used a third party alternative called Boost. It's got a really clean and highly customizable design, and it just makes browsing the never ending feeds of Reddit an absolute breeze. Okay, given that my current commute to work is nil, I don't listen to podcasts as much as I like these days, but when I do, I will definitely do so using an app called Pocket Casts, and that's purely down to the level of customization I have over how the app behaves. 
Almost everything you can think of is customizable, but my favorite feature is being able to customize the skip forward and back duration. On top of that, the fact that this app also syncs my playback history across any device I use it on makes it a podcasting app I cannot go without. Now, speaking of work, I've mentioned Taskade on the channel before, but this is my go-to app for keeping a track of my weekly work schedule. It's got a really great design with amazing functionality, but the key feature is that it works on both my phone and my PC, which I love. I actually don't use it that much on my phone, if I'm being honest, but I still consider it an app that I can't live without. And staying in the realm of work-related apps for a moment, as flawed as it might be, there is rarely a day in my life that I won't open the YouTube Studio application. If you're a content creator on this platform, then you'll no doubt understand the importance of this app, as it's essentially the only way that we can assess the performance of our channel and each of our videos on our phone. There's a lot of improvements that this app could make that I'm not gonna go into here, but regardless of that, it'll always be one of the first third-party apps I download. In a similar way, Preview is another app I use for work-related content, but this time for my Instagram feed. This app allows you to connect your Instagram account, and then, as the name suggests, you can import any future images you are planning to post so that you can ensure your feed is looking the way you want it to. Call me old school, but I've always valued having a good looking Instagram feed, which by the way, if you're not yet following me over there, then you definitely should, but Preview is the app I use to ensure it stays that way. Now, I first featured Bring on the channel all the way back in 2016, and believe it or not, I've used it every single week ever since. For those who haven't heard of it, this is a shopping list application that lets you share shopping lists with other users that then sync and update in real time. And aside from the amazing functionality, the design is just unmatched in regards to this type of an app. No matter the phone I use, this app is always in that first batch of apps that I download. And then there's Skip Ads, which is a super simple app that I always set up right away whenever I start using a new phone and then it just lives in the background. And that's because, as the name indicates, it will automatically skip YouTube ads as soon as that skip ad button is enabled. Call it lazy, but for those times where you're watching something on your phone, but you're too far away to tap the skip ad button, this app seriously comes in clutch. Now, there are a lot of great stock note-taking apps out there, but given I'm always switching back and forth between different devices that do or don't support certain apps, I've always had a need for a more universal option. It used to be an app called Simple Note, but ever since discovering Notes Nook, I haven't looked back. Not only does it work on iOS, Android, and on the web, but it also features a stack of awesome features that make creating highly unique notes super easy. In a similar way, every phone has a default file explorer application, but they're all a little different. Some are super limiting, others are just downright ugly. So ever since I featured it at the start of 2018, I've always used a third-party option called Solid Explorer. Not only does it feature every bit of functionality you'd want out of a File Explorer app, but it just looks very nice at the same time as well. And that is a winning combo in my books. Now, I know I've mentioned it a lot in recent times, but I cannot create a video like this without mentioning the incredible app that is Snapdrop. If you've never heard of it, it's essentially like the universal version of AirDrop. Not only does it work with literally any device that has a web browser, yes, even iOS devices, but it's completely free and requires no account. I use this app at least a few times a week and I genuinely don't know what I'd do without it. Okay, so I mentioned at the start that I often don't keep using a lot of the apps I feature in my monthly Android apps videos. And so given that I'm so often installing lots of apps in a single sitting, I've always used an app called Unapp to get the job done. Seriously, if you're installing and uninstalling apps as often as I do, then you'll absolutely understand why I can't live without this app on my phone. And so finally, the absolute number one app I must have installed on any Android phone I use is Memoregi. And if you haven't heard of it, this is a reminder and to-do list application with an incredible design, but even better functionality. The key feature that has kept me using this app for so long is that you can set custom snooze durations for your reminders directly from a notification. Other reminder apps might have preset snooze durations and some don't even allow you to snooze from the notification at all, but not a single one that I've found lets you set custom snooze durations from the notification itself like Memoregi does. 
I featured it on the channel all the way back at the start of 2020, and I haven't stopped using it since. But there you have it, 20 Android apps that I cannot live without. If you enjoyed the video, then a sub would be greatly appreciated. But aside from that, thank you all very much for watching, and I will catch you later.